Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth video in the anatomy and physiology series of your OCR A-level PE specification. Today what we're going to be looking at is the cardiovascular system during exercise. A little bit different to the cardiovascular system during rest. What you need to know now is to, the ability to be able to draw, annotate and explain the different graphs of the cardiovascular system and explain the changes to cardiac values during exercise such as heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output. So. I, before we go into this video, I quickly want to apologise for my drawing. I am terrible, but you will. The point is, you're meant to draw this out as well. So when you draw it out, hopefully it'll be neater. And also, it's actively taking notes. So you, if you draw these out, you will remember it better than just watching me and listening to me talk about it. So, this is the effect of submaximal intensity exercise on heart rate. So, if, when looking at this graph, you've got heart rate up to size in beats per minute and time across the x-axis, which should be there in minutes which I will just put an M there there we go look at that boom so basically um, if I can get rid of stuff basically what this shows is number one there's that little rise there number one what is that that's the anticipatory rise your body knows about exercise so it releases adrenaline and that then increases heart rate which then increases oxygen supply to the muscles and nutrient supply you know which we, you can explain why that's beneficial then, secondly, you've got a fast increase in heart rate to deal with the increase in demand by, from oxygen, so you're increasing that supply. Thirdly, it plateaus as you're submaximally intense, you know, you're on a long job, long jog, not job. So, you know, the supply meets the demand, so, you know, you don't need to increase heart rate any longer unless you increase the intensity further. Then, in joint recovery, you have a sharp decrease. Number four is a sharp decrease due to the drop in venous return. Now, venous return we will look at in the next video, which we will look at uh, the vascular shunt mechanism. So, don't worry about that for now. Just make sure you remember this. Finally, fifth, you have a slower decrease in heart rate as it returns to its pre-exercise value which is to remove the waste products such as carbon dioxide, you know. So, effects of maximal intensity exercise on heart rate. So, it's a little bit different, as you can see by the graph already. Most of it's the same. You've got the anticipatory rise. You've got the fast increase due to the increase in demand for, of oxygen for muscles. However, number three is where it changes. Remember, it plateaued in the submaximal intensity one. If we look here, it plateaued at number three here. Well, however, moving forward, it actually does not plateau. It increases once again. Now, that's because it's anaerobic, and you're, you know the supply of oxygen will never be able to reach the demand. So you keep increasing until you know you just keep increasing, and then eventually you have to stop because the build up of lactic acid. You know, you will know when you're sprinting. Eventually, you have to stop. You just can't keep sprinting forever. If you could, that'd be awesome because sport would be so much more entertaining. So as well as this, you have a bit different. Like number four is the same. You've got the fast. Uh, decrease post exercise due to the drop in venous return. But if we go back and look at this again, look how simple that recovery was for number five there. But look at it here, you've got this huge recovery there. Absolutely enormous. That's meant to go back to flat there. But look at it, that's ridiculous. And what that is, is that's because you produce all these lactic acid now, as well as carbon monoxide and stuff. You have to remove a lot more waste products now. So that's why it's such a longer recovery because you, you know, you've, you've exercised at much higher intensity, so you've used more stuff. Well, fuel. So you know, pause the video and make notes and when you need, but moving on, we're going to look at the stroke volume and exercise graph. So, basically, stroke volume, you, we know what that is, it's the volume of blood ejected from the left ventricle per beat, and it is in milliliters. So, if you look at this graph, you have stroke volume on the y-axis and intensity on the x-axis. So, number one, you know, stroke volume increases linearly with exercise intensity, which is obvious because of the increase in demand from, of oxygen from the muscle. So, you need to, you know, release more to get, you know, supply that. Secondly, it will then plateau. That's because there is a minimum uh, time, oh, towards maximum intensity, as there is a minimum time required to fully fill the left ventricle with blood, not blood, blood, you know, to maximally full. You've got that minimum time required for it to do that. So, it, you know, without increasing, uh, if you increase heart rate any further, you know, your stroke volume will then decrease, which we'll then see in maximum intensity exercise. Because you're going further, your heart rate continues to increase. It just keeps increasing. It's up until your maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus your age. Because you've gone over that time, you haven't, you, you know, you haven't got the minimum time allowed for the stroke volume, no, the left ventricle to fully fill. So it then decreases. So stroke volume drops, it drops in maximum intensity exercise as heart rate continues to full. So the left ventricle can't fully fill with blood before it's ejected again. And that is cardiovascular drift. That's a definition you need to learn. So, make notes on that. Pause the video. But moving on, this one's very simple. The cardiac output exercise graph. Very, very simple. So, cardiac, 
cardiac output increases linearly with exercise intensity. Why? Because both heart rate and stroke volume is increasing. Why does that mean this? Well, you know, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. Very simple. But then Q plateaus during maximum intensity exercise. It does not decrease. There's no, you know, it doesn't decrease like it does with stroke volume or cardiovascular drift. It's because even though stroke volume is decreasing, heart rate is still increasing. So it levels itself out and it plateaus. So, thank. Oh no, I haven't finished the video yet. I've got one more table for you to learn. So we all looked at the rest values of both a trained athlete and an untrained athlete. Draw. I mean, you know, rest of heart rate, stroke volume, cardiac, out cardiac output. What I've done now is I've just extended that table with the additional values that you need to know. So please, right now, pause the video, make a note of this table, and get it onto your flashcards to learn. So, thank you everyone for watching. I will just recap quickly what we have learned in today's video. We have learned how heart rate changes during exercise, how stroke volume has changed during exercise, and how cardiac output has changed during exercise. In the next video, what we are going to look at is the vascular shunt mechanism. And the main areas of this is what actually is vascular shunt mechanism the process of vascular shunt mechanism, or aka the physiology of it, the venous return mechanisms and physiology, and just a bunch of key terms which you have to get familiar with. So thank you everyone for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with your friends who are also studying AWPE, and I will see you in the next video.